Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm not really sure what we're making. See, I saw um, The Witch, the movie, and I wanted to make something with like a Black Phillip esque vibe so I started making this goat demon dude but then he started like taking on like shamanistic personalities to me so I'm not really sure what he is but I just wanted to make something like really creepy some kind of creepy goat man because my creepy vibes were coming on real strong and I just really wanted to make something spooky so that's what we're making today so to start, I'm taking um, some tin foil and I'm just squishing it into the rough shape I'm going for. I do this for a few reasons. The first being it's going to make the head lighter so it's less likely to fall over or bend the wire in ways that I don't want. And it's going to make it so that the clay bakes more evenly in the oven since once again, the clay is not going to be as thick. And once I have the rough um, tin foil shape, then I'm going to start covering it in a layer of clay. And then I'm just going to start pushing it around, adjusting it to get the um, head shape that I'm going for. And as you will see, I am taking up tons and tons of reference photos for this goat. Because as I always say, say it with me people, references people, references. You will always need references. They just help so much, especially for things that you're not really good at sculpting at or you're sculpting for a first time. Because for me, horses, deer, goats, that just head shape is like really hard for me for some reason. So I always take out tons of references from different angles, different types of goats, just to see um, what they look like, what I'm trying to go for and to try to replicate it as best as I can in my abilities. So there is never a downside to references and you don't even like say you're making some kind of fantasy creature, even just looking up things that inspire you or, or things you're trying to work towards that can be used as a reference. There's just so many things that references help with. There's just no downside to it whatsoever. So once you got all your references all ready to go, it's just a matter of adding and subtracting clay, pushing it around, trying to get the look style whatever you're trying to go for try to get that um you, this is kind of like the part especially in the beginning where you kind of just have to trust the process because my sculptures go through like a whole range of like it looks like um a ewok it looks like oh it's supposed to be a fox oh it looks like an ewok right now <laughs> like oh it's supposed to be a demon dog well it looks kind of like a rat right now so it, it, it just trusts the process you know it goes through many different stages until you get to the final one that you're going for so just be patient with yourselves and make sure that you're taking breaks if you need them because you know it, it can be very frustrating if you're just forcing it and you're trying to make it work over and over and over again and it's not going the way you want so just make sure that you guys are taking the breaks that you need if you need to take a little time away because sometimes when you do that it'll help you see things that you were missing so like say you put it aside for a little bit and you stop looking at it and refresh your brain and when you come back you're like oh okay well this clearly needs to be fixed and and this needs to clearly be fixed and that's what I was missing because I was so frustrated earlier I couldn't see it so you know this art form it takes a lot of time but it's just meant to be fun and it's meant to um show off your creative little brains and to just um, give you a new art form to be creative in. So just have fun with it, guys. And if you, you over there, if you're in the corner over there saying to yourself, well, I'll never be that good and I, I won't be able to do that. No, 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 no. Okay, I believe in you. I think you can do it. So you can totally do it. So go get that clay. Go get that whatever you wanted to be putting off, whatever you've been putting off, whatever little artsy thing you've been thinking about, like, oh, I can't. Hey, 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 go, go do it. I believe in you, okay? You got this. Yeah. To make the goat man's horns, I'm actually going to be using um, cost clay, which I've mentioned in a few videos. It's a type of clay that once it's baked, it's like 
super super flexible so for more fragile bits like horns claws just any type of accessory that would normally be very fragile it's absolutely perfect for because it will just never break and it'll just flex if it's dropped or something it's absolutely amazing stuff and i will have all the links to it if you guys are interested in the description i'm not sponsored or anything but i freaking love this stuff so i wish they would um but i'm just using it to sculpt out the goat man's horns and adding all the little details and stuff it's just it's a dream to work with guys like we've been out here begging for clay like this for a long time and it's finally here it's just awesome For this goat man's fur texture on his face, I am I think I switched back and forth between a different um, types of tools to see which one I like best, but I think I ended up using just a um, silicone tool and I'm just lightly dragging it across the clay sculpture in little tiny strokes, making um, fur details and just making sure that I'm following the general shape and flow of a... Um, whatever animal I'm furring. So you don't want to just have the fur all go in one direction. Um, that's a lot of new people who start sculpting do that. And you wanna make sure that you look at the animal or whatever it is you're trying to make. You look at the fur pattern that it has in pictures and you just try to follow that. And that's gonna help you give a more realistic look and flow to um, whatever piece you're trying to make. Um, I'm also using the cosplay to make um, little creepy hands for Mr. Goatman over here. Now you best believe I was using references all over because I've never sculpted hands before and they are really difficult and I just, this is why I stick to animals. People, just, no, I just can't, can't do it. So hands were definitely, um very difficult for me. I think they turned out pretty okay though, especially for a first go around. Like. I'm gonna toot my own horn a little bit because they have the little creepy, like, come to me, darling, vibe that I was going for, so.
to make his um, hooves for his feet, I am using Instamorph. I didn't want to use clay because I was afraid that it being such a small piece that it might break off the wire or crumble or something. I've had that happen in the past, so I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm using Instamorph. And Instamorph is just these plastic little pellets that you put in really hot water and they melt and they become moldable. And then once they um, cool off, they turn back into like a really hard plastic. So for small details and little things, they are also very good for, so like if um, Instamorph is more readily available than Cosclay, it's another option because it's perfect for horns and claws and things that normally would break and this one it's so rigid that it wouldn't break. And um, it's very versatile so like if you mess up, you see right here, if I mess up um, the hoof I can just remelt it and try again. So it's very versatile in that way you just have to be very careful because I mean it is really hot water that you need to put this stuff in so just make sure you guys aren't burning yourself. And once I've baked all the pieces and I bake um, the clay pieces at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about like 30 to 40 minutes and I've attached it to the armature, it's time to build up the body. And for that I'm just using quilt batting. You can get them from like um, Hobby Lobby Michaels, most craft stores have it, Walmart has it. And they come in these really long sheets and I just cut them into strips and then start wrapping it around the wire over and over and over again until it's built up to um, how I want. Now as I always say you want to make sure that you're not building up the body quite as much as you want the end result to be because whatever fabric you're going to add be it faux fur or whatever it is it's going to add a bit more thickness to it so you want to keep that in mind when you're building up the body so you don't end up making it too thick and then it's not um, the way you want it. However you want a thick boy you go for it if you want a thin boy like I'm trying to go here um, you just want to keep in mind the final um, thickness you're trying to go for Once his body is all built up, now it's time to start sewing. Um, this is more of a see what I'm doing rather than trying to explain it because it's kind of hard to explain. But basically I'm just cutting a piece of faux fur the entire length of the doll. And then I'm cutting slits where all the limbs will go and I'll um, slide that through the faux fur. And then I'll just trim it down so it's nice and snug around the body. And then just sew straight down the middle um, with a basic stitch. Like I said, it, if I just say that it's kind of like what? But um, Hopefully the video footage along with it kind of explains it better. It, I'm just kind of like making a weird coat <laughs> and then sewing it. <laughs> That's a weird one. hands and legs are a similar process. I'll cut a piece of faux fur the entire length of the limb and then I'll start from the feet or in this case hands um, first and then work my way up towards the body and once I'm ready connected two pieces of fabric together I will use a ladder stitch. Thank you. 
full disclosure, I am sorry my light died halfway through this video, so the rest of this video is a little bit harsh lighting. But um, the next step after I've sewn it is to trim down all the faux fur to make sure that all his body is shown the way I want it to be. So I want to make sure all the joints for the um, limbs are accentuated and whatnot. And for that I'm using a pet shaver and it's a very, very, very important tool if you can afford one. You can always use scissors, don't get me wrong because I used to start out with just scissors and I just trimmed it down. But using a pet shaver just makes all the fur come off so quickly and very smoothly. And it just makes the process a lot more quick and, and personally more fun for me. So I will always recommend a pet shaver if you have the extra money for it. But don't get me wrong when I say that you can always use scissors. And I do still use scissors. So once I get all the bulk fur off, I do go back in with scissors and um, make sure all the joints are very prominent because sometimes um, the pet shaver just can't get to all the little nooks and crannies that I need it to. And once all that is done, I am starting my painting. And it was very simple. I'm just using um, folk art acrylics and I'm just painting pretty much all of it black. <laughs> this guy was very simple. He wasn't like super fancy. He was mostly just a black boy. And um, I added a bit of red for his eyes just to make that really pop and stuff. But um, yeah, the paint job was really easy for this one. And I just wanted to like really keep it simple for him because I wanted to enjoy it. And I don't want anything too difficult, especially after Mr big dragon boy um i needed a little bit of a break <laughs> So I always had this idea while making him to have like a sort of staff or something and I guess for me that's kind of where the shamanistic um, vibe started to come into play. Oh my god, let's do this again. <laughs> oh my god, sorry. <laughs> um, but I'm just taking out a log of clay, just rolling it out to make sure um, it's the length and thickness that I want and then I'm just making a groove and um, sticking a piece of wire in it. Ace of Clay makes this look so much easier. I don't know like what magic fingers he has, but every time I try to do this, like the clay is just like, nah fam, I'm not gonna stick. I'm gonna like go around it and not do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> so uh, if you want like better tips, go watch how he like does that. He, I, I don't know, it's just magic. But anyways, once I get the, um, log of clay the staff start going i decided to put in crystals at the very top and i'm just testing out the different types to see what i wanted i think i only went with like one or two because at first i started with a bunch but it just didn't really um feel right so i ended up just using one or two of them and um i just i, I was gonna paint them anyway so it didn't really matter what they were but i thought it just gave a nice little um accessory to them now to make it back to the creepy vibes I have these little Warhammer skulls and I just took a bunch of the littlest ones I had and I just put them all over the top of this staff. And it just really brought back that creepiness, just having skulls all embedded into his staff. I thought it was really cool. And I'm just texturing um, around them to make sure, for one, it gives a cool texture, but to also make sure that all the um, clay, the little head pieces are embedded deeply into the clay and they're not gonna like accidentally pop out. And um, I also wanted to make it look like his staff was wood, so I'm just scoring the clay with a dotting tool to give that wood texture that I'm going for. And once it's all baked in the oven, I'm just now starting to paint it. Um, I just went with a nice dark brown color and then I end up dry brushing um, some lighter browns on it to really um, show off all the texture that I created and dry brushing is a really easy neat effect where you're just taking a lighter color and you're 
wiping off like most of it off of your um, paintbrush and then you're just lightly dragging it over the surface that you want and that's really going to bring all the um, details and stuff to the forefront because it's going to make nice highlights on the very top so they're going to make it a lot easier to see all the detail that you created so it's a very nice um, <laughs> now I'm just thinking my head super easy and super effective <laughs> but it is so <laughs> um, dry brushing is a really easy way to just level up your paint jobs and after all of that he is finally done thank you guys so much for watching this video and sticking around to the end i do want to give a quick shout out to all my patrons i just i appreciate you guys so much and the support that you guys give me um it really means a lot and i'm just i i'm really grateful for it but yeah thank you so much for watching this video um he will be for sale probably by the time this video is up so if you're interested in adopting mr demon boy um i'll leave all the um, links in the description for my shop and stuff but yeah thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one